Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The latest World Investment Report shows that foreign direct investment into South Africa fell to a 10-year low last year. Terence Krima joins me now to discuss the slump. Welcome, Terence. Awesome. The UNCTAD figures were released this week and make for an unflattering reading for South Africa. Yeah, this figure is very volatile. You know, foreign direct investment tends to move uh, quite aggressively every year and can be dependent on one or two big deals. But I think the, the outcome or the print this year uh, for South Africa is, is disturbingly low at $1.8 billion. Uh, That's a 69% drop from the year before and is well below the peak of 2013 of, well, uh, of close to $9 billion. So you can see it's quite a big pullback. And I think it reflects the mood. And I think it's, it's said in the UNCTAD report, that's the United Nations Conference for Trade and Development, in their report, in their tracking, they basically say that South Africa's lackluster economic performance, the weak commodity cycle, as well as uh, the electricity price surge, all contributed to this, this, this decline in South Africa. And I think there'll be a lot of attention paid now going into the future as to how whether South Africa can, can, can recover from this very low base. Um, it happened in a, uh, you know, in a context here where South Africa remains the largest out, uh, outward investor on the African continent. It's not the largest, uh, doesn't have the whole largest stock um, of, uh, of foreign direct investment in Africa. That still belongs to people like the US, the UK and France. Uh, and actually China also overtook us as the largest developing country investor in Africa, but we still a significant investor in South Africa, but we also there saw a pullback by South African companies with lower foreign direct investment into the rest of the continent. So all around the 2015 uh, figures on the foreign direct investment front uh, were disappointing. This all came though despite a rise in FDI globally. Yes, a major surge, uh, nearly 40% surge uh, to nearly, uh, well to 1.7 uh, 1 trillion uh, US dollars. That's a, it was a big uh, climb. And there was also a big shift in the composition um, of FDR. Over the last de uh, decade or so, we've seen more and more developing uh, economies taking prime, the prime spot in terms of FDR flows. What we saw last year was that there was a shift towards developed the more rich countries. Uh, the US again, uh, you know, climbed back into top spot again. And, uh, you know, we saw 55% of all foreign direct investment flows went to developed uh, economies. That's a major change from, uh, I think it was cl closer to 41% the year previously. So it's a big shift towards, uh, towards the rich countries. But I think a lot of it, as Angtad said, it was a bit of a flattering and deceptive picture. A lot of it is a, a merger and acquisition. And a lot of it was about tax inversion or strategic interests that the corporates were taking. Uh, and discounting for that, uh, FDR flows would have been uh, closer to 15% higher rather than 38% uh, headline number. Africa's performance also came under pressure. Yes, Africa, like South Africa, you know, the same sort of issues around commodities um, and weak uh, economic growth uh, came under pressure during uh, 2015, around 54 billion in, in, in inflows into Africa. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we saw in Southern Africa, interestingly, a 2% rise, but most of that was attributable only to Angola. Uh, Angola had uh, nearly 9 billion worth of FDR, but it was all about intra-company loans. So again, a bit like uh, what they were saying about tax inversion and uh, what took a place in the developed world, that was also not so much real uh, FDR. Well, it's real, but it's, it's not greenfield FDR. Um, so. Africa had a, had a pullback. Um, the, we, we also saw that uh, some countries in Africa did start recovering from, from for instance, Egypt, which uh, got, a, uh, got cut back quite mar markedly after the Arab Spring. There we saw a good, a strong recovery. Uh, and there were pockets uh, of recovery elsewhere. But on the whole, Africa also took pain on the foreign direct investment front during uh, 2015. However, uh, UNCTAD believes Africa in 2016 will outperform the world uh, in the sense that the world is unlikely to meet, uh, in UNCTAD's view, uh, these levels uh, of 1.76 trillion. Again, next year, they think it's going to be about 10% lower, but they think Africa will recover. And the two drivers there uh, are liberalization in terms of uh, foreign direct investment and markets, and also some state-owned enterprise restructuring and privatization, which 
they think will lift FDI inflows into the continent. They don't have a prognosis for South Africa, but as I said earlier, I think uh, th th people will be watching to see whether South Africa can start recovering from this low base. We know that there's major efforts underway to try and work together as business, government and labour to reignite growth and to make South Africa a more attractive uh, investment destination. There's also work in the mining sector which has taken major strain to try to sort out the legislative environment. I think if those planets start to align, we might start seeing a recovery again. And again, we must realise that this figure is very volatile. It's, it's not one that stays static and it doesn't always tell you a trend. So one year doesn't, uh, it won't, you know, it doesn't tell you where we are, where we're headed. But I think um, uh, there's still going to be some concern at how low this was. Thank you, Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.